Hi, welcome to today's skill builder session. Are these images free to use? In this session, we're gonna be reviewing five questions to ask yourself when you find works on the web that you want to reuse. So um, there are some training resources and more related uh, information about copyright on the Agnes Scott College Copyright Guide uh, located at Agnes, sorry, at libguides.agnescott.edu forward slash copyright. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into the chat for our viewers here. And so you can see a lot of questions that people might ask the library about copyright for education purposes, but at the very bottom, there's some training material. And one of the pieces of training material that we have is using creative works um, fairly. It's a slide presentation that we put together for students to figure out the five questions you need to ask before reusing a work found on the web. Copyright is complicated, um, and so it can be really intimidating, but mainly the whole thing is, is that you just have to ask for permission. So simply providing credit is not enough. If you want to use a work created by someone else, you always have to have permission. So fortunately though, there are many sites that will provide that uh, permission. And we're gonna talk about what those, how you can spy that and what kind of, how these questions that you're gonna ask yourself can guide you to being able to figure out if permission has already been provided or um, if you need to contact the copyright holder to get permission. Many people feel that only commercial entities or even large, only large commercial entities are required to do more than just provide credit to reuse a work. And this is not true. Um, Non-commercial entities and all individuals in general are required to obtain permission to reuse a work. Really the question is, is anybody gonna come after you for it? Um, you are the one who gets to take that risk. Um, yeah, sure, most likely nobody is, but you just have to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into when you use a work. So while this may seem daunting, I'm gonna share with you the five questions to ask in order to determine how to obtain that permission. So my very first question is, um, is there a license or a statement indicating how the work may be used? Many resources come with a license or a statement that provides permission to reuse the work and explains how it could be reused. So when you're on a website and you find an image, here are some clues that will help you figure out if something is available for um, to be reused. It may indicate that there's public domain. So you'll be looking for this word public domain and I'll tell you a little bit more about public domain in a moment because it is very different than Creative Commons. So you might see Creative Commons. Uh, the Creative Commons licenses will indicate that it is free to be used. And if you were to click on this link, it'll tell you how it's allowed to be used. If um, it says some rights reserves instead of all rights reserved, then that might be an indication as well. And here's another example of how Creative Commons looks. You can see that they have a little icon there. So look around to see if there is an icon or some sort of statement associated with the image. And that will help you know. So remember, public domain, some rights reserved, Creative Commons, those are three ways that you'll know that uh, images might be free to be reused. And then there are some websites where it's not gonna be as obvious. So some of them don't have a Creative Commons license um, and they just created their own license for reuse. Up here is one of my sites that I enjoy going to. Um, this is the licensing information for a clip art site called openclipart.org. Um, Artists just upload their content there and if you go to the licensing information or even maybe the frequently asked questions, you'll find um, that all of these are in the public domain, that the artists release them into the public domain by putting them on this site. That means that they're free for you to use. You don't have to do any attribution. So look for that. Look somewhere on the page. If you come across an image you like and you really wanna use it, look to see if the website that's on there tells you licensing information. For instance, here is another one. This is from the Tate Gallery in uh, the UK. And um, to locate this one, I had to go to the terms and copyright page. Sometimes this is just terms and conditions. And I controlled F, used control F on my keyboard, typed in the word license, 
maybe I typed in copyright, maybe I typed in intellectual property. I'm not sure which one, but you can see if you read through this one, this one is very clear. It is not available for reuse. You've got your answer. Um, you know that it's not available um, according to their website, but just because they say no on the website doesn't always mean that's the end. You can always contact an organization, tell them your particular situation and just see if they're willing to let you reuse the image. But again, permission is required. So make sure you do that due diligence before you decide and think, oh, well, they're, it's a nonprofit organization. They're probably gonna feel okay with me using it. You know, you really wanna clarify, how did they get the work? Um, and do they have the right to uh, redistribute it? And do they give you permission to do so? Now, the second question that you'll probably want to ask if you are not able to see an obvious license or find explicit permission to reuse a work, um, what you'll want to know is who the uh, creator of the work is or who owns the work. So I could create a work and um, somebody is interested in purchasing it from me. I might give them all of my copyrights um, as a copyright holder, I have the right to distribute, I have the um, right to create derivative works. Um, there's several rights that I have in terms of uh, my copyrights, and I can retain some of them, but give some of them to others, or I'll give the whole thing. So sometimes it's not going to be as clear as, oh, this is the artist that um, created the work. They may have given their work to somebody else. But understanding who created the work is a great place to start. So some ways that you can figure that out is you can always look at the credit line. So this is an art, this is an image that appeared in an article. Um, I'm able to reuse it because for fair use purposes, because I've altered the image in some ways. And I'm also using this in educational purposes. And I've kind of transformed the way that the image is being used. So there is a fair use argument for how I'm using this particular image. But most people would not be able to reuse this image um, a, without getting permission specifically from Mark Peterson. Um, Mark Peterson is the creator of it. And Getty Images is the one that this site got permission from to use it. So it's housed in Getty Images. So what I can do using that information is I can do a Google search. If you Google search Mark Peterson right now, you'll see he even has a Wikipedia page. He's no small time artist. He also has his own website. And if you go to that website, you'll see that there is contact information. So I could just message him from there and say, hey, I really like this image. Uh, send him a link to it. Can I reuse it? He can let you know if he doesn't have access to it anymore, if he doesn't, he's not the copyright holder, or he can tell you, yes, you'll just want to save that information so that if anybody comes back after you've used the work, you can tell them, hey, I got permission. And they might think, you know what, that is not the person who has access to that. And you can say, well, I really think that I did my due diligence there. And that would be true. Um, there's no reason for you to have had to move further than the artist. But if the artist um, doesn't seem like they're going to be the copyright holder because everything on their page was all rights reserved, you can also go to where it was licensed from. So uh, Getty Images, I searched for Getty Images. I found this image on their site and they indicate that I got to purchase a license. It's possible that they might have circumstances where they provide access to this without having to um, uh, have the person pay for it. But from the get go, they're telling you, no, no, you have to pay for this. Um, if you're going to use it in this circumstance, and anything else, just you have to let us know. So if you're not willing to pay up this money, then probably don't use the image. So that's something that you'll be able to do with a lot of uh, sources is um, just kind of doing a little bit of research to find out who owns the image. I'll tell you more about what to do if you don't know who owns the image in just a moment. But I also wanted to indicate that sometimes you come across sites that clearly the work is not done by professionals. For instance, on Instagram, DeviantArt, YouTube, a lot of people who are basically amateurs, um, just trying out things, put their work up onto these sites. And um, sometimes even these people might not have even gotten into high school yet. So, um, 
clearly these are not works that are advanced necessarily all the time, but you still have to recognize that they own the copyright to their work. So unless they explicitly say that um, it is free for you to use somewhere on their site or do provide a Creative Commons license or say some rights reserves and link that to a specific license that they create, then you have to assume that this work is only um, accessible for reuse if you ask permission. And this is a good example of a site from DeviantArt. Um, what you can't see here, because again, I've distorted the image so that I can reuse this um, without violating the copyrights of the creator, um, but illustrating a point. This is a really cool image. If you like the show Stranger Things, it's amazing, cute little poster of one of the characters. And it is definitely something that people would want to reuse. But you can see down here that in the comments, um, he's been asked if the, somebody um, can make a t-shirt with it on it. And he said, no, um, he doesn't allow anybody to reprint it. But it is possible just by putting in a comment here that he would have said, yes, some people don't care, but you can't assume that people don't care um, just because you might not care about what happens to your work, you have to always ask. And there's a lot of different avenues for asking somebody if you can reuse their work. So if you can't find the creator, there's no credit statement and you're having trouble determining who created the work, you could consider using a reverse image search tool like Tenai or Google Images and identify where the work was originally published. This is kind of an advanced skill and we're not gonna go into it in depth, but this is definitely something that I'm happy to share more with you. You can always contact somebody in the library and we'll help guide you through this. But here's an example from Tenai. Um, this is an image that I found on a um, website. I think it was an article shortly after the Women's March. And so I right clicked on the image and I put the URL, the image URL in Tenai, and it came up with this list of places where it had been used previously. Originally, this was best match, but I decided to do oldest first so I could see the first time that it was used. And I can see that here, um, this first one, I didn't see any kind of uh, attribution because originally in the image that I looked at before, there was no author or credit attribution. Um, so I couldn't figure out who the creator was. But when I went to this one in a Scientific American article, I was able to see who created the image. And from there, I was able to determine if who I would need to contact in order to get permission. I don't remember which whether I would have had permission automatically from this. I think I did have to ask. So that's one way that you can go about figuring out who the creator is if it's not very explicit. So, so far, just to recap, in our first three questions, we are looking first to see if there is a license that is already placed there that gives us permission. So that might be the first thing that you'll see is that somewhere on the page, whether it be next to the image or embedded in an about statement about the site or the terms and conditions, there will be something telling you that the, how the images are available to be reused. And then the second thing that we talked about is using the author or creator information to identify options for potentially obtaining that image. And even though at that stage, we're less likely to get permission without asking, um, it's still a possibility that we can ask once we identify who the person is. And it's not completely out of the picture that we wouldn't find permission in some other format. So those are the first two places. And if you can't find those, use a reverse image search to figure out who and where the source, the image was originally used. So moving on to our next question, our fourth question is, how do you plan to use the image? This is, we're kind of transitioning away from identifying whether we're allowed to use it. At this point, we're thinking that we are allowed to use it or we're not allowed to use it. And so we have two options. We can either determine if fair use applies, and you've already heard me mention that I think that fair use applies to this very public presentation that I'm recording um, for a couple of the images that I've used in this slide presentation. And uh, we can also um, think about whether we are following the terms and conditions that were laid out in the license that we did find. So if we did find an image that has a license with it that allows us to reuse it, 
we have to pay attention to that license and follow what it says in order to make sure that we're using it in the way that the license says we can. So um, Creative Commons is usually going to be the most explicit license, and that's a great place for us to start in terms of talking about what to look for in a license. First off, often attribution is required of a license. Um, in the case of Creative Commons, it is always required. So they are going to, if you're going to reuse one of the images that you find under any Creative Commons license, and there's many of them, there's at least eight of them, I think, then you're going to have to um, at least credit the creator, but ideally provide the title of the work, um, provide the creator of the work, and provide the license of the work. So in some credit line, have that information. And we highly recommend that you hyperlink to each of those. So for instance, the title of the work should link to the image where you found the image. The creator of the work should link to a profile page or a gallery page of their work, maybe their website, something that helps people learn more about that creator and see their work. And the license should ideally link to the license if it's available. All of the Creative Commons licenses are linkable. And you can see the example of this in the image here. This is by a professor actually at Agnes Scott College, James Dietrich, um, who uh, put his work under Creative Commons um, it's CC by uh, 2.0, and this is how he titled it. So anybody's free to use this under these conditions that they do attribution. He's not restricting them from modification. If there is modification requirements, uh, no modification requirements, then it would say uh, it would be um, in D, meaning no derivatives. Um, so that means that the work has to be used as it was originally published. And then it also doesn't have NC in the um, Creative Commons license. And so that means that it is available for commercial use. Some things will restrict commercial use. Um, and we have a really interesting case here at Agnes Scott. Some of our faculty members were preparing to do a summer school class and we asked them to do marketing videos for those summer school classes. From our perspective, it was just gonna be this homegrown kind of fun activity that was a um, conversation essentially between our current students and the faculty saying, hey, take my class and this is why you should take it. Um, but because we were marketing these uh, classes and it was beyond a small scope of who was, um, it wasn't associated with a specific class. It wasn't uh, limiting who was being able to see this video. A professor who did his due diligence to identify Creative Commons licensed music ended up selecting music that indicated that it was not available for commercial use and they got contacted um, because marketing of course is commercial use so that's where some of these reuses can be tricky so you have to follow those terms and really consider how am i using this work another thing to consider in that is um, if we are looking at unsplash this is showing their license of how to reuse uh, and Splash is a website that has a lot of stock photography. You can see that if you did look up their license, unlike Creative Commons, they do allow your work to be used for commercial and non-commercial purposes. So again, make sure you look at that license, make sure that it is something that is free to be reused according to the license for the purpose of how you want to use it. Uh, just one caveat that I do wanna put out here for people who are using um, things like Unsplash in and many sites that might provide this license that kind of gather images together into one location. Um, one thing you have to consider is sometimes people who are uploading things, if there's not a rigid standard for those people who are uploading the items um, and there's not a review process and somebody uploads something that's technically not theirs, then that can be problematic. And so I do know that some companies are less comfortable with using some of the free sites like Pixabay, Unsplash. So you'll wanna to talk to your employer, your communications department, and make sure that they are comfortable with pulling stock photography from a site like this and any caveats that they might have. A company, if you're working for them, it's in their best interest to do everything by the book and um, have things be properly licensed. So ideally they'll have access to their own stock photography um, or provide a budget to do, to do so. So keep that in mind. And then finally, um, 
in terms of thinking about uh, how items may be reused, well, actually not finally, this is a, um, we're building up to fair use, but um, if you find that something is in public domain, public domain is very confusing for people. They hear that term all the time. They associate it with free to use because it is completely free to use. There's no restrictions on it if it's in public domain, but not every work that's free to use is in public domain. So keep in mind that Creative Commons, licensed materials, things like Unsplash, even though Unsplash does apply a public domain um, license to many of their works, technically they've outlined some stipulations on theirs that differ from public domain. Public domain means that whoever is the creator of the work has given up complete rights to anybody. They didn't transfer it to Unsplash. They just completely gave up the rights and anybody can now take those images. If everything in Unsplash is public domain, then somebody could just take all of their images and create their own site because all of those would be completely free to use. You just wouldn't be able to use their metadata and their structure of organizing the information. So keep that in mind that public domain is different than those other things. Um, and it usually applies differently in different countries, but in the United States, anything that's produced by our US government is in public domain. So if you want a cute animal picture, find a government site that, um, uh, regulates uh, our works with animals and you'll find a cute little picture to use of animals. If you are um, interested in something like the NASA space launch, you can find some interesting things there too that will have spaceships and stuff like that. Anything that's produced by the US government will be in public domain and is completely fair for you to use. Also in public domain are any works produced in the United States more than 96 years ago. So here's an image of Langston Hughes having a party celebrating um, one of his works. And there's several uh, high profile people, um, other authors, librarians, researchers uh, with him. This, because it was published in 1924 is in public domain. Um, there are some other caveats to this. If the site where you got it from has uh, transformed the work in any way, or um, they're the only holder, of, they've digitized it. So they've, if they've digitized it, it could possibly be that it's their work. Um, if somebody has taken a photo of something um, and they're the one presenting it, there's a different layer of copyright. A good example of this is thinking about music scores. Um, so music scores will be in, uh, public domain if they were produced more than 96 years ago, but if um, a more contemporary group plays that song, it doesn't mean that that song is in public domain, uh, even if it was produced 26 years ago. Um, that group has done something to uh, change the work and has um, put in their own talents into it, so you have to be careful with that. So just wanted to make sure it's clear with public domain. We're getting close to the end of our time, but I think that this is gonna be one of the last, um, we're getting very close to being done. Um, the, and I won't go too much into this. A lot of people also say, well, it should be available to be reused under fair use. Fair use is very complicated. And let me tell you that the only time that I can, the only really clear situation where fair use will apply, um, in every situation that has these characteristics is when it's a limited portion of an item that is used as in instructional materials or coursework for a very specific class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, class, <laughs> taught by an instructor at a non-commercial educational institution. And this source will not be accessible to anybody else outside of the class. So keep that in mind that that is really what fair use is. It's also commenting directly on the work. Um, so there are ways that you can reuse a work if you are directly commenting on it. Um, and I will come back to that in the Q&A um, so that you guys can uh, get more information about that. It's also if you transform the work, if um, you have, uh, it's about the amount of the work that you're using and also, if um, you're infringing on the market of that work. So fair use is a lot more complicated than what we probably have time for today, but you can always contact the library and we're happy to go through a discussion about that with you. Now, our final um, question to ask is, do you need to contact the original creator for permission? 
I mean, that's what we've been building up to. And if you um, have not found a license um, for it, then the answer is probably going to be yes. Um, you will always contact the copyright holder unless one of the following is true. You are the copyright holder of the work. The work is licensed under Creative Commons license. The work falls into public domain. You purchase a license for the work to be reused, or you've conducted a fair use analysis, and the majority of the factors are in favor of fair use. So um, that is all that we have for today's session. If you have any questions, you can email us at library at agnescott.edu. Thank you so much.